Hello there. Welcome to Just the Dis. My name is Brian. We talk about Blu-rays here. And today I will be talking about some stuff from Imprint Films from Australia, part of Via Vision Entertainment. I've talked about them on the channel before. I'm a big fan of what they're doing. And we have some uh, Hammer Films and some older uh, horror films, basically, uh, from the... 40s and maybe 30s I think but let's start with what everybody wants to see which is the hammer horror four gothic horror films you can see which ones are included in the set on the cover there Countess Dracula Hands of the Ripper Twins of Evil and Vampire Circus and it's got the very nice you know pop top and I'm gonna pull them out in the order that I was watching them most recently. I'll start with Hands of the Ripper. This is from 1971. And uh, this one I had never seen. In fact, I don't think I'd seen any of these. Um, but this one is interesting, for sure. Uh, it opens with a man on the run from the police in what appears to be London in I believe the 1800s at some point and he stumbles into his presumably his apartment his wife or presumably his wife is there they've got a small child in the room and she proceeds to say that you know there's been another murder and they're after the guy and she suddenly looks at his hands and they're covered with blood. This is all within the first like three to four minutes of the movie, just so you know. And she's like, oh, it's you. And then, of course, he stabs her to death. And we cut to the little girl in a crib. She must be a couple years old. And she witnesses the entire thing horribly. And then we flash forward to a... like you know, a, a parlor where there's a seance happening and this woman is trying to communicate with the young daughter of a, another couple that's there. And then uh, we hear this girl's voice and we realize that this woman, as part of her scam, is using uh, what is the more grown-up version of the young girl we saw in the first scene as her assistant and this woman is pretty unscrupulous and there is a sort of doctor type there and he sort of takes an interest and in notice in this uh, young girl she's supposed to be like 17 or 18 at this point um, as he's leaving and there I just want to set this up so so what happens is there's a trigger with this young girl where she sees light reflected on a, you know, crystal or a piece of jewelry. She is mesmerized and brought back to that moment when she was in the crib and she saw the flash of the knife and the fireplace and and she suddenly is somehow taken over by the urge to kill. And so she ends up killing the uh, psychic woman and the doctor sort of discovers it and then he decides that he wants to take her in because he wants to try to sort of discern the the root of the evil of a murderer. And so he takes her in and is trying to figure out like what's triggering her and maybe she commits a few murders while in his custody, maybe not. But anyway, that's sort of the gist of it, is this doctor trying to figure out this murder stuff and this girl who's been scarred by this experience she had, and so that's sort of the setup. You know, will they get caught? Will she? How many people will she kill? That sort of thing. Um, the back says, the record tells us the Ripper killed nine times and his legacy lives on with a series of fresh, horrific murders perpetrated by the infamous killer's own flesh and blood, his daughter. So this could be called daughter of the ripper or something like that i guess um but anyway so it was interesting interesting setup interesting movie and um these i think are all uh region free discs i had no problem playing these in my 
uh, American player, U.S. player, just so you know. Uh, and you can get them through Via Vision Entertainment. You can get them through import CDs. You can get them through eBay. You can get them through Amazon. Uh, they will be a little bit more expensive. But uh, I do like these imprint box sets. I've talked about their Noir box set. I've talked about another Hammer TV box set they did. And um, so they're doing good work with their box sets. And these are fun, both of these. So anyway, this has a audio commentary by uh, Angarad Rees and Kim Newman and Stephen Jones. And Kim Newman and Stephen Jones are a great duo. They use them a lot on these. In fact, I think they'll come up multiple times throughout these two sets because this is definitely their jam. But those two guys are really great together. Kim Newman alone is worth the price of admission. But So that's one commentary. There's another commentary with Hammer Historians uh, Jonathan Rigby and Kevin Lyons. And then something called The Devil's Bloody Playthings, Possessed by the Hands of the Ripper documentary. I want to say it's about 28 minutes or something like that. Uh, Fresh Blood, an interview with director Peter Sazdy. Slaughter the Innocent, The Evolution of Hammer, uh, Gore, and that's a stills gallery. And U.S. television introduction, audio only, original U.K. and U U.S. theatrical trailers and TV spots. And that's that. And then... On the inside, you don't have alternate artwork. You have sort of fold out um, other artwork. Uh, and that's the disc. So that is Hands of the Ripper. Next up, we have Twins of Evil. This one from 1971 as well. Another one that I had heard of but hadn't seen. And this is directed by uh, a guy I'm a fan of, John Huff. Uh, British director John Huff, who did uh, Legend of Hell House. He did uh, Watcher in the Woods, which really needs a Blu-ray, and I don't think it's going to get it because it's Disney, but we'll see. Um, he also did Dirty Mary, Crazy Larry. Um, just a really interesting director and a guy that I, I definitely enjoy his stuff. Um, and this one is another sort of medieval tale of these two twins. You can see them there. They... I forget what circumstances happened to their parents. They were orphaned, I believe, in some way or something. And they end up living with, I think, their aunt and uncle. And the uncle is played by uh, Peter Cushing. And he's a very pious sort of, um, uh, I want to say he's a minister. And, you know, he's the kind of guy that when they show up and it's been like two months since their parents died and they're not still wearing black, um, he is highly offended by that. Like, in his mind, you're not honoring your parents unless you're wearing black for three to six months after they die. And so he's very conservative, and he actually runs a group that hunts out, sort of hunts down witches at night and burns them alive uh, at the stake. And so what we have here is a case of good twin, bad twin, and there's this sort of... Um, Higher up, uh, he's, I can't remember how he's related to the emperor, but this guy here is uh, a local dude who's very debaucherous, likes lots of sexy time with the ladies, and Peter Cushing is kind of um, after him to, I don't know, take him down for his sins, cleanse him. But he's like, if you do, the emperor and his men will come down hard on you and everyone else in this village. So he's kind of protected. It's kind of like diplomatic immunity and lethal weapon too. And so this guy, he's just bored and he's he's trying to get satanic rites done, rituals done around his castle. And the naughty twin sort of takes a liking to him. And there's vampirism. And I'm not going to spoil too much more, but um, there's some... There's some uh, vampire stuff that happens with one of the girls and it kind of uh, spins from there. And it's interesting how it plays out with Cushing and everybody. Um, but this is an enjoyable one. This is uh, fun to watch these two twins. I don't know these actors, these actresses, but they are both good together. And, um, of course, Peter Cushing is great as this pious witch burner guy. He really works. <clears throat> so... Um, this one has an, two audio commentaries as well. Uh, Kim Newman and Stephen Jones, of course. 
Uh, Hammer historians and historians Jonathan Rigby and Kevin Lyons again. Director's cut of The Flesh and the Fury, uh, exposing Twins of Evil feature length documentary exploring Hammer's uh, Karnstein trilogy. Um, and there's something called Satanic Decadence and the Legacy of Sheridan Le Fanu in Hammer's Twins of Evil, a visual essay by Kat Ellinger. Always welcome. Anything by Kat Ellinger I'm a fan of, but I love her visual essays. Um, the props that Hammer built, the Kinsey uh, Collection featurette, interview with uh, director John Huff by Hammer historian Marcus Hearn, interview with actor Damian Thomas, Super 8 version, deleted scenes, um, isolated music and effects track. That's Twins of Evil. <clears throat> Next we have Vampire Circus. This one is from 1972. And I've told this is one of the later Hammer entries, but definitely one that seems to have its fans. Uh, the back says, 15 years ago, the villagers of Shittettle, uh thought they'd killed a vampire, unbeknownst to them. The leader of a traveling circus is the vampire's cousin who is intent on reviving his relative and having his revenge. So you have kind of a cursed town story um, in this one. And years later, this carnival comes to town and there's, there be vampires in the carnival and uh, it's bad news for this town. We'll put it uh, that way. And um, this one also has an audio commentary by Kim Newman and Stephen Jones and also has a commentary by Phil Hammer historians Jonathan Rigby and Kevin Lyons. Uh, something called The Bloodiest Show on Earth, The Making of Vampire Circus Documentary. Gallery of Grotesqueries, A Brief History of Circus of Horrors featurette with British author and film historian Philip Nutman. Revisiting the House of Hammer, Britain's legendary horror magazine featurette with author, film historian Philip Nutman. And Behind the Mirror, The Secret History of Vampire Circus documentary. This one's stacked. Blood and Circuses, interview with director Robert Young. Vampire Victim, interview with actress Sylvia, Sylvilla K. Cutting Hammer Horror, interview with editor Peter Musgrave. And Vampire Circus comic book, animated stills gallery. So this one actually has... There's the um, Hammer Heritage of Horror on a separate disc. And then, of course, the Vampire Circus itself and the internal artwork stuff happening. So that is Vampire Circus from 1972. And last in this set, Countess Dracula. And this one's from 1971 as well. And uh, the back says, An embittered, widowed countess discovers the secret of youth, but its short-term effects leads her on a killing spree for the prime ingredient, blood. So this is a woman who marries to... Um, I believe, kill her husbands uh, as she's a vampire. Uh, the more she drinks, the prettier she gets. The prettier she gets, the thirstier she gets. So you know how this is going to go. Um, and this one, again, stacked stuff. We've got those two audio commentaries. This time we are involving actress Ingrid Pitt, who is the star of the film. And so the audio commentaries are by Ingrid Pitt and critics Kim Newbin and Stephen Jones. And Ingrid Pitt... And director Peter Sazdy, writer Jeremy Paul, and author Jonathan Sothcott. And then we've got another commentary by Hammer Historians Jonathan Rigby and Kevin Lyons. So you get three commentaries on this, incredibly enough. Uh, something called Vampire Lover, The Life and Career of Ingrid Pritt, a visual essay by Kat Ellinger, another gem. And Blood Countess Bathory on film, a visual essay by Kat Ellinger, as well as... Oh, I sorry... I, I already read that. Oh, no, that's two visual essays by Kat Ellinger uh, on this one. Man, oh, man, this is so well put together, this disc here. Immortal Countess, The Cinematic Life of Ingrid Pitt, featurette. Archival video and audio interviews with Ingrid Pitt. Interview with director Peter Sazdy and Hammer historian Marcus Hearn. Interview with actor Leon Lissick. Interview with writer Gabriel Rene. Isolated music and effects. So these are really stacked discs these um these hammer discs 
are pretty solid, you know, uh, not bad for a first, I know they've done a Hammer TV box set, and, uh, you know, that's nice, but this, in terms of movies, this is a nice start, this, you know, I'm hoping, like uh, Indicator, we get to see some more Hammer box sets from Imprint. Okay, so that is one. And then we have even more movies in this. Silver Screams of Cinema box set. Very pretty. But so this has uh, some lower budget. I can't remember if these are Poverty Row Studios or not, but I think they're pretty close. Um, lower budget, you know, cheapy genre films starring folks like Bela Lugosi uh, and others you may recognize. Again, has the lovely pop top. And we have three discs in here, <clears throat> but each one contains two films. So you'll get, you know, The Phantom Speaks and Vampire's Ghost. You'll get Return of the Ape Man. Oh, yeah, John Carradine's in that. Uh, and then Valley of the Zombies. And then you'll get uh, She Devil and The Unknown Terror. So a lot of stuff in here. You, know, you might be saying, well, I'm getting two movies on each disc. The bit rate will suffer. Normally, I'd say you're right, but in this case, these movies tend to be around an hour. So that's another thing I kind of love about them is that they're not particularly long. Um, but so, like, let's get into this here. So in this case, the back side is on the inside. So... I'm going to pop out the Blu-ray and we can talk about the Phantom Speaks, uh, an ace spine tingler of murder and revenge with a dead criminal taking possession of a living mind. There's some good features on these too, by the way. Um, and so this one, I'm very curious about the, I haven't had a chance to watch these, but this one is like a reporter learns that an executed killer has taken over a scientist's mind and I'm intrigued by that idea. This one's actually a little over an hour, an hour and nine minutes. Um, but it has audio commentary by film historian Tim Lucas, which is brand new. Audio commentary by horror fantasy authors Stephen Jones and Kim Newman. Love it. And then a bonus movie, uh, The Lady and the Monster from 1944. So you get a bonus movie on this one, which is pretty great. It's all in one disc. Uh, and then Vampire's Ghost is intriguing in that it is about, well, the back says, the spell of the man who couldn't die weaves a web of horror around a beautiful girl. But it's about, uh, in a small African port, this bar run by an old man named Webb Fallon. Uh, and he's actually a vampire, but he's becoming weary of his life over the past few hundred years. So we're just sort of dealing with where he's at in his life. But what I find really intriguing about it is it's got an original story by Lee Brackett. And Lee Brackett, of course, was the screenwriter who worked with Howard Hawks on Rio Bravo, The Big Sleep. Um, she was one of his best collaborators as far as I'm concerned. This is actually the movie she did in 1945 before The Big Sleep in 1946. Um, but yeah, so she would do Rio Bravo, Hatari, El Dorado, Rio Lobo, Long Goodbye. Uh, then she would go on to work on The Empire Strikes Back. And she's just a great screenwriter, one of my favorites. So I'm intrigued by this one because she worked on it, you know? And I'm curious. She was a genre writer. I think a lot of people know her as a screenwriter, but she also wrote science fiction stories and this is it says based on an original story by her so I'm very excited to check that one out that has come out previously on a um, all of films blu-ray but I I'm very excited to check out this new one now this also features a commentary by uh, this in this case Tom Weaver and Gary Rhodes so all these have commentaries at least 
Uh, and I do like that kind of, you know, Tom Weaver, one of the Universal Horror guys. I'm sure he'll do a good job with this track. So that's the first disc in this set. Then we have Return of the Ape Man. Again, John Carradine and uh, Bella Lugosi in this case. And this one is, it's not in Sino Man, but like there's a discovery of a perfectly preserved caveman that prompts a mad scientist to attempt a daring brain transplant. And that's all I'm going to say about that one. Uh, and again, Bella Lugosi, John Carradine, Frank Moran. And um, this one also has a commentary by Tom Weaver and Gary Rhodes. And in this case, Steve Cronenberg as well. Uh, that is a monogram picture. I think I don't see that for all these. Um, but monogram is definitely a studio that's involved with some of this stuff. That one runs about an hour. And then Valley of the Zombies, uh, that runs 59 minutes. I do love those short films. Um, so Valley of the Zombies is a woman falling under the hypnotic spell of a resurrected madman. And uh, it says a mad undertaker restored by a potion has an all-consuming need for blood and seeks revenge on those who had him committed to an insane asylum. So it's a revenge movie. This has a commentary by Tim Lucas. I love those. Uh, and also an audio commentary by Stephen Jones and Kim Newman. So you really hit the jackpot if you're into commentary tracks for both of these sets. You're getting some really heavy hitter folks you know, doing the legs, leg work on those. Okay, so last but not least, we have She Monster, or sorry, She Devil. No, not that She Devil. This one is from 1957, and uh, no Roseanne Barr. This stars Marie Blanchard and Jack Kelly and Albert Decker, um, and it's a, it says a biochemist give, gives fruit fly serum to a dying woman with side effects. So I'm going to let you discover what those side effects are for yourself. Um, in the back here, it says, Two doctors try an experimental serum on their dying patient. They save her life, but she has been transformed into an unscrupulous femme fatale who murders her victims. So it's sort of a film noir horror type thing. Uh, and this one has a commentary by Stephen Jones and Kim Newman something called uh, a tales of tomorrow episode the miraculous serum based on the science fiction short story the adaptive ultimate and something uh sort of a radio adaptation radio anthology episode uh called escape also based on the adaptive ultimate which is the story that this film is based on so that is she devil and that is from 1957 and then the unknown terror is uh about a woman who leads an expedition into a remote jungle to find her long-lost brother, but instead finds a mad scientist who created a fungus monster that feeds on the local inhabitants. So like something like uh, From Hell It Came, or I mean, that's more of a tree monster if you want to get specific, uh, but this is a fungus monster. It kind of looks like the monster from, from Hell It Came, actually. A little more uh, definition in his claws and his digits there. Um, but yeah, the, the back says, The mysterious disappearance of Jim Wheatley while exploring a cave near a Mexican village brings his sister and her husband to the territory to search for them. Uh, and this one also has a commentary by Stephen Jones and Kim Newman. They are our all-stars of the night and are really working their tails off to bring you lots of commentaries. And those guys are just a lot of fun to listen to. So Imprint really doing up a lovely collection of lower budget genre cinema to go with our hammer box set. And uh, I'm a big fan of what they're doing, like I said. So I do recommend checking them out and checking out uh, what they have coming in the future. They're definitely putting out stuff that is sometimes not on Blu-ray. There's definitely some Blu-ray debuts in here. Like I said, Vampire's Ghost and Return of the Ape Man have been on Blu-ray. And I feel like um, several of those 
uh, from the Hammer set have been on Blu-ray. Maybe not Countess Dracula, but I feel like Twins of Evil, Hands of the Ripper, maybe Vampire Circus. Don't quote me on that. Um, but anyway, these are really nice additions with excellent special features. I can't recommend imprint films enough. They're really doing good work. Again, all region free. You don't have to have a multi-region player to play these. Um, so all the more reason to check them out. And um, that's it. So thank you for watching. And uh, I will be back with more Blu-rays soon. Bye-bye.